Good morning and welcome to In Touch with TJC. Today is the second Sunday after Easter and we bring you love and blessings from God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Once again, we welcome you to In Touch with TJC, a program coming to you on GBC Obono FM 96.5 megahertz from the Tema Joint Church, an ecumenical body located at Tema Community 7. The vision of the Tema Joint Church is to bring men, women, and youth and children into true fellowship with God so that they can live lives at the fullest in Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a church which seeks to inspire people with the good news of Jesus Christ through worship, evangelism, witnessing, nurturing, and service to the community. The Tema Joint Church seeks to create a dynamic, redemptive center where ordinary people know and share God's love. We have in the studio with us this morning, Reverend Timothy Victor Bobby, who is an associate of the Tema Joint Church. Reverend Irene Corsa, an Anglican priest, is also with us. She will be delivering the sermon and with us also is Reverend Dr. Diana Van Odum, a clinical psychologist. Reverend Obobi will lead us through the intercessory prayers. In the studio with us is also the Tama Joint Church Choir. Ah, the organ is Brother Emmanuel Pamfo Kumsen. I am the very Reverend Helena Pokusako, dear, the resident minister of the Tama Joint Church and your presenter. Please stay tuned. The choir will sing with us. God reveals his presence. And you can find that in Amazing Grace Him Now, number 29, AGH 29. God reveals his presence. <laughs>
tuned in, you are watching or listening to In Touch with TJC, an inspirational program coming to you from the Terman Joint Church. And you can bless this church with any donation, donation of any kind, whether in cash or money or any items. The church USD code is star 725 hash. In following the prompt, enter the church's code, which is 3264705. To make it easier, you know, if you're like me, you just go with the Momo account. It's always so easy. And the Momo account number is 024. Three four five six two three zero. Let me take it again slowly this time. Zero two four three four five six two three zero. Let us pray. Indeed, O oh, thou font of every blessing, purify our spirits. Because our trust is not in our merit, but in your grace and in your mercy. Like the holy angels who behold your glory, may we also learn to ceaselessly adore you. Let your will, O Lord, ever still rule your chair terrestrial as the whole celestial. As we continue to pray for your kingdom to come in our lives, O Lord, Establish it. And when you establish it, Lord, teach us what it means to live a kingdom life. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer and die upon the cross, giving us an example of his great humility mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth our citizens in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue together as we sing, there is a redeemer. And of course there is. And the name of that Redeemer is no less a name than the name Jesus Christ. We find that in AGH 355. After this hymn, we shall invite the Reverend Irene Corsa, an Anglican priest, to present to us the word from the Lord. There is a Redeemer, AGH 355.
Our first scripture reading for this morning has been chosen from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 36 to 41. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 36 to 41. Let us listen to the word of God. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Beloved, the word of God. Our gospel reading for this morning has been chosen from Luke chapter 24 verse 13 to 35. The gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verse 13 to 35. Let us listen to the word of God. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God. morning people of God I speak to you in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit the theme for our reflection this morning is Lord stay with us which is from our gospel reading a story that occurred later in the day on Easter Sunday after the resurrection of Jesus Christ this story, known as the road to Amos, is found only in the gospel according to Luke. I believe this gospel passage is so apt for the times we find ourselves in. At the beginning of the year, many of us had our lives all planned and well laid out, looking forward to a prosperous and happy new year what we wish each other at the beginning of each year with high expectations. None of us anticipated this turn of events. Our personal lives have changed. We cannot move around like we used to. Some are living in fear because their very livelihood is shaky and not sure what the future holds. Some are simply afraid because this virus is vicious, an unseen enemy with no boundaries, and it is no respecter of persons. This pandemic is not limited to any particular place. The whole world is in a crisis, and many people are in despair. Almost everywhere in the world, people are in quarantine. This situation has similarity to what happened on the day of the resurrection. The disciples were in hiding or isolation like we are now, in fear of arrest by the Romans and probably being killed because of their association 
with Jesus. In our case, it is a fear of a virus that could possibly kill us. Some of the women who followed Jesus had gone to the tomb with spices to embalm him, only to find out the body was not there. And then they encountered angels who told them Jesus had resurrected. When they reported it to the 11, they did not believe. Peter went to verify, and truly, the grave clothes were there, but not the body. Our gospel passage is a continuation of what occurred later on in the day after this event. The story begins with two followers of Jesus on the road to Emmaus, discussing the strange things that had occurred earlier on when they were joined by Jesus, whom they did not recognize and thought was a stranger. These two were not part of the inner circle of Jesus, but they were devoted followers who were present when the women reported the situation at the tomb to the 11, and when Peter left to go and find out. When Jesus asked what they were discussing, they were surprised that he had no knowledge of all the things that had happened in Jerusalem. Are you a stranger in Jerusalem? But then they proceeded to tell him. They expressed the expectations they had of Jesus delivering the Jews from the Romans and how this death had taken away that hope. Jesus told them what the scriptures say about himself from the prophets to Moses, but they still did not recognize him. When it became, when it, was it, was it because Jesus had changed? Did they not recognize him because he didn't look like the one they knew? No. Nowhere in the New Testament are we told that his appearance changed after the resurrection. In John chapter 20, verse 16 and 17, Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener until he spoke to her, and then she recognized him and responded, Rabboni. She ran to the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. The 11 recognized him when he appeared, and so did Thomas. These provide evidence that he looked the same. The words in verse 16 says, they were kept from recognizing him. For some reason, it was apparent that a force outside of themselves prevented them from recognizing Jesus. We can also assume that they were so consumed with their hopeless situation that they, that they were in that the last thing they expected was the one they were sure was dead to be the one walking with them at that very moment. It is like the hopelessness some are experiencing right now that is even affecting their faith in God. Some of the questions I keep hearing are, where is God in all this? Why is he not doing something? What kind of answer do you give to this? God is still God, and he remains sovereign. God knows and sees what is going on. The Bible says his ways are not our ways. And we, as human beings, do not have the privilege of knowing everything. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29a says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever. This may be why we do not understand our present situation. Similarly, though Jesus told his disciples what was going to happen to him, they still did not get it when it happened. Peter left the tomb 
wondering what had happened. Meanwhile, the Lord had told them about this very day, this very event occurring. As Jesus walked with the two and explained all that to them, it still did not click. As far as they were concerned, they had met a stranger who was knowledgeable about scripture. As they were to confess later, their hearts burned within them as he spoke to them. So when they appeared or approached the village where they were going and Jesus continued on as if he was going further, they just had to persuade him to stay with them. Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over and Jesus obliged. There was something so special about this stranger that they longed to spend more time with him. The invitation of the two is the inspiration for the hymn, Abide With Me, by Henry Francis Light. It is said that he wrote it after he visited a dying friend who kept repeating, Abide With Me and he gave it to his friend's family. But interestingly, it was sung for the first time at his own funeral. This hymn, when you study the words, is not a farewell song to the dead, but rather it offers comforting words for the living in all kinds of life situations. It is a prayer asking for God's presence with the author throughout his life, trials, and death. It is appropriate for us at this time also when many are faced with loneliness and uncertainty. As Christians, we desperately need to feel the presence of the Lord as he reveals himself to us through his word and be comforted in the knowledge that he is with us. The Christian life is not devoid of suffering. As I usually say, we have not been promised a bed of roses. All kinds of things come to us, just as it comes to the world. Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, 33 b, in this world, you will have trouble. This is a fact of life, and even though we know it, it is scary when we anticipate trouble and when it actually happened. But then he also continued with words of reassurance, comfort, and encouragement. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The two disciples we encountered had lost hope. Their expectation to be redeemed from oppression had been dashed because their savior died, or so they thought. They had seen an empty tomb and no savior. So their narrative to Jesus was done in hopelessness. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe. It was only when Jesus was at table with them and gave thanks and broke the bread that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Perhaps that is what you and I need to commune with the Lord all by our lonely selves in our lockdown mode where it is just us and him. This is the time to strengthen our relationship with God through prayer. When they recognized him, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. This means even when they had not recognized him, his teaching alone stirred up something within them. They may not have understood fully, but it shifted something in them. The death of the Lord, which seemed like doom, was actually the liberation they were seeking and hope was restored. God Almighty had put in place a plan long ago for this to happen, for the Lord to suffer, die, resurrect. 
and thus bring liberty to the world at large. This is the experience we should all be seeking as we study the scriptures, to experience Christ in a very special way. Our two friends were energized with their newfound revelation, and immediately they left to Jerusalem. Whatever their reason was for going to Emmaus was abandoned. They had to tell the disciples who were still in isolation. They did not sleep over. The Bible says, while they were reporting what had happened, Jesus appeared in their midst. Before he left, he told them, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This time, it was Jesus himself who extended the lockdown until the coming of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, the Father's promise, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples after Jesus ascended into heaven and their lives were completely changed. They came out of isolation and once the once timid and fearful disciples became very bold and fearless. Why? Because they obeyed the Lord's instructions and waited on the Lord. In Acts, Peter now empowered, boldly warned and pleaded with the people around to repent. And on that day alone, 3,000 gave their lives to Christ. And as Peter told them, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. In conclusion, you and I are part of those who are far off and have been called. So when we pray, Lord, stay with us. Know that the spirit of the Lord is with you. Jesus is not here in the physical. He sits at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. He sent his spirit, the spirit of truth, to abide with all God's people. He is our advocate to help us and be with us forever. He permanently indwells us, teaches us, guides us, reminds us, bears fruit through us, comforts us, equips us with spiritual gifts, and empowers us. I would like to remind us of the words of Abide With Me, especially the first, fourth, and fifth stanzas that are so comforting and full of hope. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh Lord, abide with me. I need thy presence every person are. What but thy grace can fall the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is their sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. We have an Akan song in reference to the road to Emmaus that says, O Ora, Sayenchenka Kra, Adiriye Asa, Wunchrei Amayen Hun Atoye. In God, we would say, Ola, Alo Nuncho. He won't say, Fio, she jemina. Only two more, only two more, a hawahi, a jaw. Meaning, Lord, stay with us for a while for your teaching has brought us comfort. Beloved in the Lord, that is what the revealed word of God does. It brings comfort to the soul. 
It is my prayer that the Spirit of the Lord will abide with us in this crisis to heal those who need healing, comfort those who have lost their loved ones, help us out of this situation, open our eyes and ears to see and hear him, give our leaders godly wisdom to know what to do, and most of all, draw those who do not know him to himself. And when we are all out of this, may we be transformed beings who seek to reach out for what is eternal, and may his presence be felt by us as we navigate this world through his grace and mercies. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. with us even as we go through these difficult moments yes many of us are afraid we are scared we do not know what tomorrow will bring I want us to lift our voice and speak with God even at this moment wherever you find yourself God is with you God is with you wherever you are. You can have that special encounter with him. That even in your lockdown, the Lord would appear. That your eyes will be open so you see him. Your ears will be open so that you hear him. So that you not emerge from this lockdown the same, but you come out of this lockdown as stronger people, bold people, ready to face every challenge that is before you. The word of God has come to you. And I'm sure by now you appreciate how God has helped people in lockdown. How he's liberated people who were filled with fear. How he's helped people who had things bothering their minds. People who were uncertain about their future. Here is our opportunity. Just speak with him in your own special way. God hears you. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, He's here. He's listening. He knows what is deep down, what is going on deep down in your heart. He knows you are disturbed. And 
And I want you to join hearts with us, even as we sing this hymn that was mentioned in the message, the hymn number 366, Abide With Me, and make it a prayer. It's a prayer. I want you to prayerfully sing the verses 1 and 3. every person out. Oh, let's say what will come our way. Lord, stay with us. Be near us. Cause us to feel your presence every passing moment. In Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friend, if you just tuned in, you are listening to In Touch with TJC an inspirational program from the Tema Joint Church. And in case you want to write us a check so we can reach out to the needy and the vulnerable, and trust me, we have many of them, not only in our church family, but in our church community and beyond. The church is USD code S, star 725 hash. And following the prompt, enter the church's code, which is 32642705. Those of you watching us on the social media platforms, we shall crawl those numbers. Those of you on radio, if you cannot memorize it, you can uh, just get in touch with any of us here. Call the resident minister. And you can read the resident minister on 020-815-8079. To make it also very easy for you, we have a Momo account number. As for Momo, it has come to stay. And any of us can easily use it. So the Momo account number is 243 Two, three, zero. Give us a fat check. One million Ghana cities, one million dollars. 
it is for a good cause. And the Lord rewards those who cheerfully give. We want to invite you to stay tuned again, same time next week, for another inspirational worship experience. The person who brought us the message was Reverend Irene Corsa, an Anglican priest. Yes, she is a father, she's a priest. Just in case you don't know, the Anglicans have women in the ministry now, they do. But they are not fathers, not yet. They will get there eventually. And the one who prayed with us was the Reverend Timothy Victor Obobi, an associate minister of the Tema Joint Church. I am the very Reverend Helena Opokusakodie, the resident minister and also your presenter. Remember, this too shall pass. The Lord will walk us through these difficult and turbulent times. So find a way to stay calm, because the Lord is with us. Thank you. We sign off by all of us sharing the words of the grace together. Shall we share the words of the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The choir will give us a chorus. Just get up where you are. You've been sitting in that car for too long. Just shake the devil off. And tell yourself, this too shall pass, because God is still with us. Shake it off. Just shake it off. But don't forget to write us a fat check. One million dollars will be okay. Don't worry. We know how to spend it. It's towards a good cause. God bless, bless all of you for tuning in. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, and God bless you.